Om Shanti. Today's chapter is titled Madhuban. Through busy, though busy in a hundred projects, Baba used to write letters by hand and with great love. Those letters were invaluable to the people who received them and proved to give purity to the soul and radiation of power throughout the body. He remained in Karachi to continue serving countless thirsty souls around the world in this way. While the senior children went ahead to Mount Abu to prepare the new residence. BK Tati Manohar Indraji, who was among those who had left straight away for Mount Abu, recalls an incident which occurred weeks later on Brahma Baba's arrival. When I first got to the new residence, I saw a large snake in an upper room. I became fearful. We had selected the wrong place for the yagya. So when I met Brahma Baba at the Okha airport, I whispered to him, Baba, there is a snake in the place that we have bought. I considered it my duty to tell this to him. Baba replied with an understanding smile. Daughter, there is no harm in it. What servant is going to harm us? We have only to fight against the serpents within. Baba, of course, referred to lust and anger and the other vices. I felt happy again and realized I knew that Baba himself had selected this place. But why? What made Baba select Mount Abu for the Yajna? He explained in the ensuing days that 5,000 years before, the first deity Brahma had, his, had done his penance here, along with the first goddess Saraswati. On this mountain were the memorials to, do, to that momentous event, the most beautiful temples in the world, Dilwara, Ambamata, Adhar Devi, Kumari Kanya, and Achalkar. These temples tell in marble the story of a group of heroic yogis who conquered death through their union with God and who emerged from their cocoon of meditation as pure and perfect souls who had earned rebirth as royal princes in the dynasty of the sun. So on one side, the memorials of the Yajna remained here from the last cycle and now the event was being reenacted re alive, reenacted live. On this very mountain, we would once again become Sun Dynasty kings of the lineage of Vishnu. The Yajna members were soon well settled in Brijkoti, which they renamed Madhuban, the forest of honey. Daily the flute of knowledge played on while the children grew ever stronger. When time allowed, Brahma Baba took them walking in the hills. People who happened to see them stared in wonder at this white parade of graceful shaktis. Were they dreaming or was it a vision? Never had they seen such women climbing mountains with grace and energy. Brahma Baba himself was well over 70 years of age. Still, he walked faster and more surely than any of them, as if the heavenly kingdom lay just over the ridge. They rested on the top in meditation. Baba spoke some jewels of knowledge, and then simply by the look in his eyes, the shaktis would go into deep trance. Sometimes, while dancing in trance with closed eyes and experiencing in their minds, that they were dancing with Prince Krishna, they would come to the edge of a cliff. Those who watched would become fearful, but this was unnecessary for how could one who, was, who has the support of God fall? And indeed, nothing untoward ever occurred. The happiness in their lives 
remained unbroken. Many times, Baba told everyone, go in groups of two or three, go on different hillocks, sit in meditation and churn the knowledge in your mind. Just as cows chew the cud, just like that, think over the knowledge you have heard and hold it in your memory. When the white-clad Brahmakumars and Brahmakumaris sat on the high mountain tops, from below it seemed as if white clouds were covering the peaks. When they climbed the hills in a row, people on the road thought white birds were flying in formation in the sky. Outside people think religious life means renunciation, but Baba's children knew that they had only thrown away useless trash and had received real happiness instead. There was no sense of self-denial here. Rather, Baba's children were on a permanent holiday. Often after morning class, it would be announced that Brahma Baba would have a picnic with the children. Dear sweet children, Brahma Baba would say to them, we shall go to the mountain today and sit there in remembrance of Shiv Baba. We will also tell deep and lovely knowledgeful stories. And after that, Shiv Baba will give the children prasad, holy offering personally, by hand. Children, this is a family satsang, spiritual congregation, as well as a university. You are all very dear children of God, separated for many births, and have met at the end of the kalpa, the cycle of time. So the ocean of love will lead you all with his own hands and will give you joy. He is without physical form. He has no body of his own. Because of that, he has taken the body of this Brahma Baba unknown. He will give with these hands the prasad of the yajna with great true love. Even the date is pine for the prasad of this yajna. Children, you are very lucky that the one God feeds you personally and educates you personally. It is a stroke of the greatest fortune that Shiv Baba, the creator of the three worlds, comes from far off Paramtham, the world of souls, and teaches you. The one for whom the sannyasis are searching in the forests, for whom the gurus sit in samadhi in caves, the father of Christ and the inspirer of Moses, the one whom devotees are trying to find at the pilgrimage places, at Mathura and Kashi, earning even a moment of his darshan or vision, devotees are prepared to cut off their heads and kings to renounce their kingdoms. Such a dear father comes and teaches you. He talks to you with love. He plays with you. He is your friend. There is a famous song about meeting God in this life. But for worldly people to recognize him in this ordinary human body is difficult. There is a veil over people's eyes. They believe in nothing but the physical. He set out for the picnic and we hurried to catch him. With a gleam in his eye, he turned around. Children, are you remembering Shiv Baba behind whose back you are walking? If you stay in yoga, you will earn millions with every step. Further on, he would stop. You children walk ahead and I will come behind you. The cow herd always stays behind the cows. I must keep you from getting lost. Then when the way became tricky, he came to the front again. The guide must show the way and the pilgrims walked behind him. <laughs> While holding the hand of one of the little girls, he gently asked, Daughter, whose hand are you holding? Is it of Shiv Baba or Brahma Baba? Daughter, never stop holding this hand. Do you know? where you will be led by holding this hand. The next moment he asked another, with whom are you walking? He got the answer with Baba. Baba replied, yes, but do you remember what you were inheriting from Baba? Walk on, 
in the joy of getting that inheritance. For Shiv Baba is teaching you children Raj Yoga and he wants to make you kings of kings. Again, he would start walking with great speed. Once after going far ahead of the rest, he said, look what a grand Shakti battalion this is. You are so far behind. The young became, the young have become old. Then he explained, there are two engines in this body. One of them is the soul of Brahma and the second is the soul of Shiv Baba. And so this body of Brahma works fast. Sometimes he would deliberately take the children on a hard road up the hill. Many mothers who were old and could not climb would say, Baba, Baba, stop. Why would you take this way? There is no place even to hold on. There is only a round slippery stone. Where shall we put our feet? Then Baba would hold out his hand and give them support. By becoming the support of every heart and mind, even in so small and practical way, God brought them into his remembrance. When some of the children were out of breath, they called out, Baba, that is enough. Please do not go further. Dear Baba, let us stop on this rock. Sometimes he gave in to them, so they were pleased. See, Baba is listening to us. Sometimes Baba did not believe them. And they used to laugh. See, Baba does not listen to our talk. There, were, there was lightness and love in every action. In every conversation, there were feelings for each other's welfare. Study, yoga, transformation, service. Every act was for the upliftment of the soul. Difficulties were also there to keep them on their toes. On this subject, Dikhe Dadi Vishwaratanji, a Madhuban resident, calls, recalls. In quotes, rich Koti, which lay outside the city limits and near a forest, was near a cemetery in a lonely area. There were snakes and other animals in the vicinity too. The house had been taken for a very long time before we came. The people of Mount Abu claimed there were ghosts living in the house. Such things did not create any fear in us. If a snake passed into the view, we watched it with detachment. We belong to Shiv Baba. We thought to ourselves, and we are not harming this creature at all. So why would it harm us? Many times, ghosts used to come. <clears throat> but because of the power of yoga and purity, they could not remain. Eventually, the ghosts were forced to find another place. For here, where goddesses still growing in strength, learning to conquer the global ghosts of lust, anger, greed, ego, and other vices. We kept our minds connected to Shiv Baba, the bestower of victory. Through this union, we became invincible. We felt no fear of lustful people who were more poisonous than venomous snakes. So how could we feel afraid of lonely places or slithering snakes? On the contrary, we felt more able in this lonely atmosphere to become stable in powerful yoga. Yes, we liked this place very much. In those days after the war, in those days after the war, wheat was rationed in Mount Abu. Very little wheat flowers available. There was still some millet and corn flour and some low quality rice, but even that was not in sufficient quantity. The strange taste of the heavy mineral water on the mountain and the dry, thin air were further tests for the Yagya children. Many of us came from wealthy families and had never experienced physical discomfort. Now we learned tolerance, economy, and being able to accommodate different circumstances. We passed the tests of hunger, thirst, and famine. We had already become small eaters, but one day the real test came. Shiv Baba gave the order for us to eat only rotis and buttermilk for 15 days. Even sick children had to eat the same. 
Several souls questioned how the ill ones would be able to live on only that. Would it not make them more ill? But the sick ones accepted the food without even thinking about it and with complete faith that whatever was given by Baba is Brahma Bhojan, the greatest medicine of all. And shortly, the health of each one had improved. From this test, the lesson that by eating according to Baba's command, much benefit is always gained, became deeply ingrained. To think that there could be harm from doing it, as God says, is greatest mistake possible. From then on, no matter how adverse the conditions seemed, we found advantage in them. This spiritual progeny of Brahma had discovered that blame and praise, victory and defeat, gain and loss, hunger and thirst, heat and cold, poverty and prosperity, all the pairs of opposites are merely tests which come to a yogi in his life. Through remembrance of God and limitless faith, one can meet all situations with a laughing face. Om Shanti.